So welcome back. I've cut out my pieces of fabric now according to our pattern hack from earlier. And let's call it a pattern hack because it wasn't actually a very accurate pattern drafting exercise. It's just to give us something to work with in order to make this new style of top from the original. So you can tell that straight away by looking at our back pieces just here. I've got the bottom, the contrast band and the top. And immediately if you look here, where we made our contrast band a little narrower, we didn't make the same corresponding changes to the top and bottom panel. So, good thing with knits, it's going to be really easy to make these fit together. All we need to do is place them over the top of each other. And as we sew, I'm going to pin one end of the panel over here on this end. And I will pin one end over on this side and our contrast panel is a little shorter so I'm just going to stretch it slightly as I sew so that the two pieces end up the same length and that means that the bottom piece although slightly wider will just be slightly eased into this panel so it won't be gathered as such it will just be slightly eased and then the two will fit together so I'll do that first of all I'll sew on the bottom panel then do exactly the same at the top and sew the top panel to this contrast panel. So our back piece is now completed and as you can see it's now eased into this centre panel so it's not gathered but um, it's just a little wider and then just eased in. So we can put our back piece to one side and we'll do the same work on the front. So let's start at the bottom and we've got our bottom panel and our contrast panel. And again, they're different. This time they're wildly different because do you remember we added an extra inch and a half, or at least I did on my pattern at the centre front. And I'm either going to gather or pleat this. Thinking about it, probably I'm going to gather. We'll see how it goes once I've got, got everything together. Now I need to match these two together. So the easiest way would be for me to mark the centres while I've got them um, folded like that. So I'm just going to make a little notch in the fabric of each for the centre. Okay, now let's open them out. So obviously what we need is for our edges, our points here, this point needs to match and it will need to match over the other side. And then in the centre area I'm going to have my gathering. So let me get myself a fabric marker and we'll start marking out. So I've got my trusty tape measure ready. And I added an inch and a half on the fold, which makes an extra three inches. So I have to ease three inches of this panel into this panel. So I'm going to just mark three from this centre point here. If this is three, I need to mark an inch and a half on either side. So I'm just going to make a little snip, because that will be easier to see than my fabric marker. So I've got an inch and a half on either side, and this is going to wear, be where roughly I want my gathering in the centre to be. And now I'm going to do the same here, except here I'm going to double it. So let's see, that will be three inches on either side. Got one here and one here. So now I'm going to gather this centre part, this six inches that I've got here, I'm going to gather down until it's three inches wide. And that will then bring in these sides so that it matches on the edges and I'll have all of my gathering in the centre front just there. So gathering with knits can sometimes be a little tricky. So if you have a look on the site, I'm going to put a link to the video and there's a video about how to gather with um, dental floss and I'm going to do that on mine. So I've added my little bit of dental, fl dental floss in the centre here for gathering and just pulled it up slightly. And now what we need to do is match our marks. So here I've got my centre and then I've got a mark one inch, one and a half inch on either side. So that makes our three. And here I've marked three inches on either side to make the six. So this mark on the one side of the gathering should, mark, should match with my little notch just here. So I will match up those, part, those points and add a pin. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to find the out, outer notch on my centre piece and match that with the mark at the end of my gathering just here. So that now gathers my six inches in the centre into my three inches. Then I'll match up 
these edges and remember that we're also um, expecting this outer piece to still be a little longer than the uh, than the contrast band so we're going to just ease those two pieces in together so I'll stretch out find the center put a pin I can put some extra pins between these points if I want to just so everything is neatly matched and then I'll come back and we'll have another look at that center part. Now it always helps if you have two pieces of fabric that you need to ease together that the fabric that um, is the longer, the one that needs to ease into the other one, um, is underneath because your uh, feed dogs on your machine always tend to pull the underneath fabric a little bit more and it can help to ease it in a little bit better. So we've now got everything pinned apart from our central area and if I turn that over, actually I've gathered it pretty fine and it is gonna match just great. So I can just pop a few pins in here too. Make sure those gathers stay in place where I want them. So it's looking great. So now I take this back over to the sewing machine. I'll need to watch out for these pins as I go and I'm going to stitch from one side to the other. That will hold those gathers in place. Um, and then I can just remove the little bit of dental floss and that will be the bottom part of the top completed. And here's the bottom panel now completed with our little section of gathers in the centre. If you wanted to pleat this instead of gathering, of course you could do that. It's your pattern hack, you do whatever you like. So let's put that to one side for now because now we need to work on the top part of our front. And we have these funny shapes. Remember we added the pleats into our pattern and we're now and we pleated the paper to make a straight line across the bottom. And we now need to do exactly the same with our fabric pieces. So using this one as a reference, I've got my fabric here and it's been cut in the same concertina shape at the bottom. So where these points are, say they're um, hills and valleys, where we've got an innie and an outie point, these are the points where we have our fold. And I'm gonna just fold those pleats in the same way that I folded the pleats in the paper. So there we are, these are our pleats in the paper and I've now carried out exactly the same pleats in the fabric and I've pleated them towards the outside in the same way. So I now end up with this same straight bottom line. I end up with the paper piece just here and I now end up with that in my fabric and I've got my two pleats which are running up towards the shoulder. So now I need to do exactly the same on the other side, except in the reverse. And here, I'm just gonna take this to the machine and sew within the seam allowance on the bottom edge, just to baste those pleats in place so that they aren't gonna move about. So my top sections are now sewn. They've got the little pleats basted in place and I've just laid it out how it's gonna be on our pattern so you can see. However, if we sew this now onto this band, we're gonna to struggle to turn over these edges. So before we do that, we actually need to attach it to the back. So if I bring the back and we're going to attach it right sides together at the shoulders. So you'll just match up your shoulders on each piece and sew those ones to start with. And then we'll have a look at finishing our edges. So my tops now have joined up here at the shoulders and around the edge of the neckline, up here, around the back, and down the other side I've added just a little bit of this fusible knit stay tape. I like to use this because it stops the edges stretching out and it also creates a nice fold for when I turn over. So now what I need to do is just using this tape as a guide I can fold over to the inside, pop a few pins and it will create a nice neat edge and I'll fold it all the way around over the back of the neck, down the other side, and then I'll just take it to the sewing machine. 
So now I've completed this by sewing the front to the back up at the shoulders and I've just laid it out roughly how it's going to be and then around the edge of my neckline up here across the back and down the other side I've added this fusible knit stay tape. I like to add that to the edges because it stops the edges stretching out and therefore stops the front from being too baggy after you've worn it a few times and it also gives me a nice edge that I can use when I fold over to the inside. So I'm now going to go all the way around the outside, across both fronts and around the back of the neck and just pin this in place and then I'll take it to the sewing machine and keep it a nice even distance from the edge all the way around. I'll sew, um, turn and sew these edges to the inside. So my top edge is now sewn all the way around and we're ready to finish off this front part. So let's just throw that back section out the way and we've now got our two uh, wrap over front sections and we need to attach it to this contrast band. So I gather that up, pop that over there. Now up until this point we've of course been easing all of these other elements into this narrower band and this top isn't going to be any exception. So if you think about how it normally looks, it would sit, for example, like this, and we'd have maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch, or whatever you've got hanging over this side. So if we lay everything in, out flat and see where the point comes just here, just fold that over, pop a pin in there, and that's where it needs to end at this side and then over here and I line up this corner and now we're going to ease this section into this area of the band so exactly the same as we did before you find where the center is pop a pin do the same here and here and as you sew you just pull very slightly on the contrast band until it stretches to meet the width of the fabric in between and stitch and then we can do exactly the same on the other side so we do one side first and then we'll do the same here so we'll have our fabric overlapping the end a little bit pin just here and then ease once again to make that fit. So let me do the one side and then we'll look in more detail at the other. So I've just basted this first section within the seam allowance just to hold that in place and we now need to place our second wrap front. So just make sure that your top isn't twisted at all. Get your bottom edge ready. Now obviously we want our top to be evenly distributed with the wraps even on either side otherwise our centre point where the wraps cross will come somewhere off centre. So if we have a look at this point where we've got this space just here, I'm going to measure that. I have got around two and a quarter inches. So this piece finished two and a quarter inches from the edge of the panel. Therefore, I want this point to also finish two and a quarter inches from the edge of that panel. So if I line that up with my edge, And I will mark my point here. So that one now fits here at the two and a quarter inch mark. So now I know that they are going to be evenly distributed. I'll pop my pin in on this other corner. Find the center around here. Put another pin. And another just here. On the other side of this pleat, you'll probably find your pleats come quite close to each other just there in the centre, which is great. And then another pin just here. And now we'll take this over to the sewing machine. We'll make sure that all these raw edges stay even and pull in slightly to make sure that this um, this band is extended so it's the same length as the fabric on the top so that we don't get any little puckers. And then I'll sew from one side to the other with our half inch seam allowance. And that will then complete the front side as well. 
So here's our front panel now completed. We've got our wrap over top um, at the front there and we've got our pleats on either side here. It gives us a little extra volume in the top and it's all cinched top and bottom into this slightly narrower band. So now all we need to do is add our sleeves. There's nothing fancy about those. We didn't make any changes. So we're just going to pin those in in the flat um, around the armholes here and on the other side, stitch, um, stitch both of the sleeves in place and then we'll move on to finishing. So my sleeves are now in and we're doing really well and it's now time for us to sew our side seams. So we'll match several points. We're going to match at the bottom of the sleeve. Obviously I've done short sleeves but yours may be longer. We'll match at this underarm point. We're going to match on our side seams where our contrast panel comes, we'll match those seams and then we'll match the bottom. However, because we have made some changes to the pattern, although we haven't really substantially changed the size, we have changed the shape a little bit. And so what I recommend is either to just pin and try on first of all, or to baste with a long loose stitch and try on. And then if you're happy, you can go on and sew these side seams and try on and make sure everything fits beautifully. So once your side seams are sewn and you're happy with your fit, we really are almost finished. You have your bottom of the sleeves just here and the bottom hem of your top and you can just finish those off now with your favourite knit finish. Um, you can use a, a twin needle perhaps or just like we did around the neckline, just turn it under once and sew around. You can even, if your knit doesn't fray and it's got a nice finished edge on the bottom, you can just leave the bottom edge free. And that is our new top completed. So I hope that gives you a bit of an introduction to pattern making and the kind of alterations that you can make. Because if we have a quick recap of what we did, we started with a, a basic t-shirt pattern. We cut it across the centre to make a, a contrast band and we measured how high or low we wanted that on the body. On the bottom section just here, we added some pleats or gathers into the centre front, which helps to hide up a little bit of a tummy if you've got one there. We also then changed the top section into a wrap and we added a couple of pleats on each side to give it a little bit of extra volume. And there we are, from our completely plain and simple t-shirt pattern, we've got a completely new top. And I hope this gives you a few ideas of alterations that you can make to the So So Easy patterns yourself in the future. So go over and um, download, if you haven't already, the On A Roll t-shirt pattern and follow through with this video and I really would love to see the kind of alterations that you make and the tops that you sew. So don't forget we have a, a forum, the Sew so, so Easy forum, and it has a show and tell section. So every time you sew anything, it doesn't even need to be a so so easy pattern. We would just love to see what you make. It gives inspiration and motivation to all of us to sew. So I hope to see you there soon. Thanks for watching.